Um, but um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Toshi Komatsu from the De Anza College Planetarium in Cupertino, California. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. So hopefully you're seeing my slides and possibly some uh, captioning happening um, at the top. And that is courtesy of um, some tips from um, Ryan Wyatt on helping prepare presentations for um, e-conferences, in particular for IPS. Um, so I put um, the link to that information on um, sort of tips on making your presentations more accessible uh, in a chat that's not in any way related to my presentation at all, um, but I just thought I'd put it in there. And it's something new I'm trying and hopefully it works. And hopefully these captions make sense because I'm not reading them, I'm just talking. Um, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So planning for virtual planetarium field trips. So many of us have turned to virtual field trips uh, for our domes in this time of COVID-19. And at De Anza College, we're planning on developing brand new virtual field trips, which I'll sometimes in this talk refer to as VFTs for fall 2020. And I've attempted to pull together some best practices from the uh, Dome Dialogues uh, group um, which has both a Facebook group and has been hosting weekly e-conferences that I know many people on uh, in this conference here have been attending. So it's good to see some familiar faces from that. Um, I've also been reaching out to personal contacts uh, for colleagues to try to figure out what some best practices are. Um, and then there's a lot which um, I didn't adjust my slides, but that I was picking up just from the LIPS e-conference from a couple of weeks ago. So from all this, we're putting it together, or I'm putting it together to try to create six brand new VFT options for our planetarium. Um, now in the before time, we offered two field trip time slots per day, Monday through Friday, and they're about an hour long each. Um, and we had one basic format, we'd have a Foldo movie uh, that we would uh, uh, present, and that would be one of the schools choosing. And then we would, um, usually do a live uh, portion that might be about 45 minutes. And typically we do sort of a sky tonight uh, kind of tour where we would use our optomechanical as well as our um, digital system to talk about things that you can see in the night sky, as well as um, depending on time and interest doing a flight through the universe. So um, flying through the solar system mainly, um, but we would do this and we would tailor that live, live content based on what uh, Foldo movie was chosen by the school and also based on uh, the grade level. So obviously the world is very different now. So we're looking to run VFTs over Zoom and again, have 45 minute shows, which is uh, very close to the amount of uh, time that we had before um, for our live portion here. Um, but we're running to, we're looking to use a mix of Stellarium, um, Digital Sky 2, which is uh, what we have and using Google Slides, which of course is what I'm using now. Um, and uh, so this is sort of the, the world that we're working in to, uh, to make our VFTs happen. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, so because screening of Foldo movies is now impossible, what we're challenged with is creating our own standalone content, which provides an opportunity for us to uh, create some in-house developed and NGSS next generation science standards driven content. Um, so that gives us something that we haven't had a chance to do before. Um, so we're excited to do that. Um, and so we're creating these VFTs to be grade level targeted and also heavily based on NGSS. And another opportunity that we're looking forward to is having more field trip time slots available. So before we had two time slots, like I said, and that's, uh, we were limited to only having two because we had, um, a, uh, a astronomy college course that was taught before our field trip time slot. And then we had three astronomy courses taught after our field trip. So we actually had 12 hours of continuous dome use. Um, and our field trips were sort of a part of that 12, but um, we we're pretty limited on the times when we could actually offer field trips. So we're hoping to offer actually more time slots and be a little bit more flexible. So that's another opportunity that we're um, looking forward to taking advantage of. Um, and then the final opportunity that I'll mention right now is opening up our bookings to middle schools, which has been a rare booking to us. Those of you that deal with middle schools or, or know that the middle school schedule with periods makes it difficult for them to, um, you know, take the time to travel to the planetarium. That's probably missing one period right there. And then there's the um, field trip ourself, uh, itself, which was probably in terms of middle school periods, about two periods for our typical time period, plus then getting back. So that's like half the day gone 
for uh, for this group, and so that gets less feasible for middle schools. So we're hoping that our um, so without having that travel time, that makes it easier for uh, for middle schools. Um, so again, the key platforms that we're using here: um, Zoom, Stellarium, DS2, Google Slides. Um, other options that I know people have been talking about and, and using um, are sort of on this column over here. Um, these are just the platforms that I'm already familiar with and the ones that I can sort of could get working with quickly here. Um, your, mileage, your own mileage may vary. Use what you know. Um, this is just what I know. Um, but the new thing uh, for us here, or actually let me kind of find my mouse here. Um, I'm not going to... Um, talk too much about Zoom because we're all using Zoom. We're obviously Zooming, using Zoom right now. The key features that we do want to be using are the chat and screen sharing and the waiting room in particular to help manage classrooms and make sure we try to limit uh, Zoom bombing, which uh, obviously has been an issue for some. Um, but per Derek Demeter and others on the Dome Dialogues, we want to also be prepared with a Zoom alternative. There have been those who have mentioned that some schools and school districts have uh, are banning or restricting the use of Zoom, so we want to be ready with another alternative. So we're looking at, for our alternative, Google Meet. Um, I know it doesn't have the same, um, uh, the full set of features that Zoom has, but we're hoping that we can still use it. Um, so I'm investigating at, uh, that as well. So again, it's just sort of an overview of our plan for uh, field trips uh, that we uh, haven't been doing any uh, this past uh, spring when uh, everyone got sheltered in place. We did a couple of test things, but as far as actual field trips, this is what we're planning for the fall, That and that planning is uh, ongoing. Uh, now, the new thing is open broadcaster software. So that was new for us, and uh, shout out to Michael McConville and the other e-conferences for, uh, one, alerting me to the existence uh, of OBS, and then two, uh, Michael was very uh, kind enough to host sort of a crash course on using OBS, and I know several people on this call um, attended that. Um, and there's definitely a learning curve to OBS, and so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail uh, there, but I would like to share one thing that uh, I think may be new or useful for others that may be um, dabbling with, uh, with OBS. And so I'd like to sort of back up a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, my Stellarium uh, configuration, which you can see behind me. Um, and that uh, this is not a good example, but some things that I did with Stellarium is I increased the brightness of the stars. This is a poor example of it, but I made the stars a little bit brighter. Also increased scintillation. Um, and then uh, the main thing is I made the colors for the lines. Um, I made the colors brighter and I made them a little bit thicker. So thanks to Patricia, uh, Patricia Reif, who ran a training session separate from the from the e-conferences, um, but had a training session on how to dig really deep into Stellarium configuration files and getting those sick and being able to switch um, between configuration files. So that was very helpful. But um, so I made things uh, hopefully a little bit more visible for, uh, for our use here. In particular, the thing that I was interested in was making the labels as large as I could make them. And so here I've made them as large uh, as they can be, um, but it still wasn't quite large enough for uh, what I wanted them uh, to be. So what I did in uh, OBS is I made a zoomed in view of Stellarium. So on the left here, you can see hopefully um, the full Stellarium window, same uh, shot that I used in the previous slide. And in OBS, what I did was, um, if you've worked with OBS at all, you know that there's um, a canvas size that you set up in OBS. And what I did for my source of uh, Stellarium window is I made that window bigger than the OBS canvas. So that allows me to get a sort of a little bit more of a zoomed in view. It does mean that uh, my center of interest, I have to keep, uh, well, centered uh, in the field of view, but hopefully comparing sort of the view on the left and viewing on the right, you can see that um, in the OBS view, for example, the, um, the size of the Scorpius stick figure there is a bit larger and that the label is also a bit larger. Again, this is, a small view for my slide, but uh, I think the the, um, the Scorpius example there gives you an idea that it's a bigger, takes up more of the screen real estate. So hopefully, again, it makes it clearer for um, for audiences. And of course, anything that's on the very edges, whether that's uh, sort of on the far right or the far left or on the top and the bottom, they get lost in my OBS view. So again, I just kind of have to be mindful of what my audience can see versus what I can see. Of course, I can always see the entire window, um, but trying to keep people's focus on the, the center of that window. Um, I'm doing this uh, very similar thing for Diddle Sky. Um, those of you that have um, DS2 
um, and have used on, on our production machine, which is what I'm using here, is that you DS2 creates a fisheye output, and then through DS2, I can make something that looks a little bit better for flat screen, but it's a it's a square view. Um, and of course, for OBS, I have sort of a, a rectangular, more letterbox 16 by 9 um, aspect ratio view. So again, I have a, sort of the top part of my DS2 output cut off. And that's okay because again, mostly what I want people to focus on is what, whatever's in the center. But again, it means also that hopefully my labels are a bit larger and I don't have to do this massive reconfiguration of my DS2 settings and increase all my, my, uh, my label sizes. I can use the, uh, a lot of what I had already created in DS2 and just sort of tweak them for use of, uh, for my field trips. I'm speaking really fast, at least I feel like I'm speaking really fast. If you have any questions, um, let me know. I'm also trying to keep an eye on the chat uh, as well, but do let me know if you um, have any questions. Um, I do want to dig into sort of my content development process, um, which was I did a pretty deep dive into NGSS. Um, and then I was, I've been writing out the scripts because it's not only going to be me doing uh, the field trips, but I'm going to have uh, a co-presenter. Um, taking the, um, the Museum of Science model of having both a pilot and a co-pilot um, to present our shows um, for as many uh, that we can do. And we also have some interactive uh, elements that we're trying to work in and uh, sort of rinse and repeat so that we get those six NGSS-based field trip options uh, that we're developing uh, at the moment. Um, now, anyone who's taken a look at NGSS knows that it's not exactly the most friendly to astronomy, and there are whole grades that skip any of the hard astronomy content. So I've had to take some of the, um, we'll call them astronomy adjacent uh, concepts as well, and I've also broken them down into sort of grade grouping. So instead of doing one, I mean, ideally, I would do a kindergarten class, I would do a first grade class, a second grade class, but I tried to, I grouped them up, so I have a K through two, uh, third through fifth grade, and a sixth through eighth. Um, is how I group them together. And then each of the bullet points, I'll let you read them. But these are sort of the, key, the uh, sort of themes or the key concepts that I wanted to address in each of the shows um, that I'm developing for the field trips. Um, now, those of you that are counting along, um, you know that I keep mentioning that I'm developing six of these field trips. There's only five bullet points here. So the last um, field trip is designed to be sort of a more general, um, field trip um, targeting just sort of K through eight, which makes it difficult, of course, because that's a very wide uh, age range. Um, but let me switch to this view so that you can see that, uh, that uh, K through eighth one. Um, but, um, but this is uh, to be a little bit more general, we're imagining this would be uh, for homeschool groups or maybe a smaller school that uh, would want to have uh, more of their classes come and that might straddle some of the, uh, the blocks that I created with sort of K through two and through uh, three through five. So it just gives another option um, for, uh, for booking field trips um, that span a little bit of a wider range. So it'll be kept kind of basic doing field, um, moon phases and using um, star maps. And for a lot of this, I will say that I'm using, I'm relying on my Lawrence Hall of Science roots. Um, so those of you that know me and have known me for a while know that I spent the bulk of my career um, at the Lawrence Hall of Science developing uh, content. Um, before I moved over to uh, De Anza College uh, four years ago now. Um, so I'm relying a lot of that knowledge um, to develop these, uh, these field trips. Uh, diving deeper into the script uh, development, um, that was um, broken down into sort of four areas. There was the presenter script itself, um, there was the, the slide deck, um, and for that, of course, I had to um, either find some images or sometimes create some images. Um, so thanks to Jackie Bauman from New York, who um, during some of the e-conferences ran some tips on using Illustrator um, that I've been making a lot of use of. Um, so thanks to her for that. Um, and then there's also, of course, the specific Stellarium and DS2 sequences um, that I've been creating. And some of it, again, has been adapting DS2 sequences that um, were already uh, created. Um, and then also um, using, uh, I'm not interested in creating new Stellarium uh, scripting. Um, I just want to sort of uh, get it, uh, um, sort of, we're going to be doing that all by hand, which we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, let's see, running short on time. So one thing that I really did want to uh, put in was the, uh, the interaction piece. And the thing that I've been trying to keep in mind is, as I'm presenting for these field trips, is this something that I have to tell the audience, or is this something that I can ask them? And um, I know I'm running short on time, so I'll run through these really quickly, my last couple slides here, is that it's a storytelling adage to don't give your audience four, give them two plus two, just as an exercise 
in um, getting your audiences to actively think. And instead of telling them something, getting them to observe something and then uh, process um, uh, process uh, what they've uh, made, what they've observed for themselves, rather than um, me telling them there. So um, uh, benefits uh, briefly that um, we want to be using polls, and that's analogous to clickers. I know I'm uh, reaching my time here, so just um, these uh, my notes and and uh, presentation will be available as well. Um, we do want to be making use of the chat box uh, as well quite a bit. A couple of things that I'm interested in using is um, the idea that everybody can ask, ask a question. And I've been wondering how many questions get missed because today I picked on Kyle, but Michelle actually had a much better question. No disrespect to Kyle. But um, the, uh, maybe there was a better question that we just didn't get asked because I didn't call on that person. So I'm looking forward to being able to do that with um, uh, virtually. Um, so one benefit. Can aesthetics, I'll just say that um, uh, sometimes we'd like to have um, the audiences with their, with their hands either follow a motion that's on the screen or maybe model something uh, for themselves. So again, a little bit more of the sort of the two plus two instead of me just telling you how it is, but having them model uh, some things. And that, um, in a nutshell, is what we're doing with the virtual field trips. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I know I'm out of time here, but uh, you can email me. And again, my understanding is that Michelle is going to make um, my slides and my presentation, the, the script of that pr my presentation available later on. So I will end it there. Sorry for going a bit over time, but um, I'll stick around for the rest of WAC today if you have questions and I can look in the chat as well. So thanks very much, everyone.